Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to coast, This Week in America. Real Prison, Real Freedom from award-winning reporter Rosser McDonald chronicles the transformation of a notorious Texas inmate, Ricky Smith, reputed to be the most violent man in the Texas Department of Corrections and the entire Texas prison system. This is Rosser's first book, but he's an experienced writer, 16 years reporting news on TV stations in Oklahoma and Texas, then 28 years as a producer at the Radio and Television Commission, SPC, 12 of those years, Rosser produced and scripted documentaries for use on NBC TV stations. Two brought Emmy Award nominations. He has many telly awards, cable TV's version of the Emmys, and many other recognitions as well. Rosser met Ricky Smith 30 years ago while filming an award-winning documentary about prison ministry. Real Prison, Real Freedom tells the transformation of one of Texas' most notorious inmates and a glimpse of the country's prison system. And acclaimed journalist and author Rosser McDonald is our guest on This Week in America. Rosser, a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you for joining us on the program. Well, I'm glad to be here. This is such an important message and looking forward to, to talking about this book and, and all the messages you have in the book. I'm going to start by talking about Ricky. I mentioned that you met him in doing this documentary. Talk a little bit about his background, why he was in prison, and what was it about his story that really captured your attention? Well, he grew up, he had a, a early in his childhood, it was fairly normal, but then uh, when he got a little older, his dad really didn't know what to do with uh, a boy. And uh, so he, he was pretty harsh uh, with uh, Ricky. I mean, and on the other hand, his mother w- was a very doting mother. And uh, so, you know, you had the, the conflict between the two. But uh, but he grew up then. Uh, he, he had dyslexia. And he had trouble in school, especially with spelling words, uh, which his dad used a belt to try to make him spell those words. But uh, wow. but finally, after uh, he when he was uh, he finished the seventh grade. I don't know that he finished it, but they passed him out of it anyway. And uh, and he decided that was enough. He wasn't going back. And so uh, when the bus, school bus would come, he'd go out to, like he was going to catch the bus, and then he'd circle back around and get his little boat and his dog, and they'd go cruising up and down Chocolate Bayou. Their house uh, was on Chocolate Bayou there in the south of Houston. And uh, so in his cruising around, he began to notice you know, things in people's yards or other houses along the the bayou and he would see something in somebody's yard that tell him, hey i could use that so he kind of you know, looked around went up got it and carried it off and uh, more and more he was doing that and even uh, began to to go into the houses and all to get what uh, things that he wanted to get and which basically is burglary and uh, the sheriff Uh, finally figured out probably that Ricky was his man as far as the burglary epidemic there in that area. And so they they came and got Ricky. In the meantime, a lot of other things had happened. Ricky uh, had gotten in trouble, and his his lawyer and the judge had figured out that the solution to that was, now get this, the solution was, that Ricky and his girlfriend would marry and uh, live somewhere else. And that was the solution to, uh, you know, solving the crime Uh, problem. But uh, the sheriff then, because uh, uh, Ricky was, uh, you know, uh, supposed to be living somewhere else, uh, the sheriff uh, decided that, uh, you know, as long as he stayed out of my county, he's okay. I'll leave you alone. So there were faults within the law, the the lawing system there, and um, and so you know that uh, it contributed to the fact that Ricky didn't get in trouble about all these things. In the meantime, his dad taught him um, how to do work in uh, 
in building, in construction. His dad was a was a well known superintendent, uh, construction superintendent in Houston. Uh, was in charge of building a number of the large, famous buildings like you know Humble and so on. Oh yes. Yeah, but uh, but anyhow, then Ricky's that was the beginning of his lawlessness. And uh, of course, then there were fights and drugs and all these kind of things contributed. So finally, uh, he was arrested on a drug charge and was convicted and sent to prison for t- a 10 year term. So he got there and he had 10 years uh, to serve. But in the, in the meantime, in the next two or three, he could have gotten out in two or three years. But instead, in two or three years, he added. 300 more years, three 99 year sentences for attempted murder. Amazing. And that's and, in uh, prison. So, yeah. In prison, he, and, and, and so, you know, he, that and uh, other things being in the Aryan brotherhood, uh, other problems like that came along and, and it just uh, put Ricky in the spot where he just had to attack people. And he was, and particularly, he was fighting against the guards, the prison system itself. And uh, so, and of course, when he would uh, attack them or fight against them, then they would retaliate uh, to him. Oh, yes. They'd bring the, the uh, squad in to, uh, you know, shake out, shake down his, his cell and they get him out and lay him on the floor with very tight handcuffs or whatever. And uh, so it was just a, you know, a back and forth kind of situation there between he and the guards, except that some of his were very, very tough. He, you know, stabbed uh, one officer with a spear that went all the way through to his back, not out his back, but to his back. He should have died, but he didn't because there was a doctor on the unit at that moment that knew what to do. So, uh, so, so he recovered. And um, he stabbed and many others. He, he, you know, they, they had these three attempted murder charges against him. And when they convicted him on all three of those, the prosecutors just said, that's enough. And they forgot all these other charges that were against him. Some were attempted murder, uh, assault, whatever. And they just dismissed all those other charges because they said, you know, he's got 300 years. anyway. Yes. It's such an incredible story that you tell so well. Our guest is Rosser McDonald. The book is Real Prison, Real Freedom. Uh, Rosser is R-O-S-S-E-R McDonald. His website, RosserMcDonald.com. You'll find the book at uh, Amazon, all of the usual places. A link, of course, on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. You touch on so many issues that I think are still relevant in society today. The the upbringing that Ricky had, he was almost destined to be someone that will be in the, in the judicial system and caught up in, in prison. Also prisons, the, the, the jail uh, correction officers that you talk about. Let's talk about the correction officers. When you read the life they go through, never really knowing when they go into work if they're going to go home that night, how do they even find people to do this job? They really put it on the line every day, don't they? Yes, and um, and it's difficult because the pay is is, is quite low for uh, a very important job. Uh, so they go in and, and they, they have such turnover in the prison. And we're talking about Texas right now. Yes. They they have such a turnover that uh, pr- pr- they have to hire people and bring them in, and they don't really have a chance to get trained. And uh, so, you know, it's kind of a, a catch-22 thing. They're just, uh, you know, it doesn't make sense that you operate a prison that way. But they didn't have any real alternative in how to operate the prison. So you had all these... Uh, officers who were not well trained and uh, you know they uh, reacted poorly a lot of times when Ricky would uh, would t- say something to them and uh, in the meantime of course the Aryan Brotherhood was a big factor there because uh, you know they gave they put out hit lists you know kill this guy because he talked back to the boss or whatever 
And they had a hit list on on Ricky because Ricky said, that's stupid. Don't kill that guy. I mean, it's over marijuana. We don't care. We've got enough marijuana. And so don't, you know, why would you, would you kill him? So they put Ricky on the hit list since he argued with them. So the, the Aryan Brotherhood was making uh, contributions through all of that. And, of course, they're active still. They're active uh, not in prisons, but also outside of prisons. Oh, yes. they, they are active and, and very, very uh, effective in you know, the drug business and so on. Well, you talk about the Texas prison system and all they went through, being labeled one of the best in the country, having a judge come in and make major changes because what they were doing was basically unconstitutional. The the prison system pushing back. Uh, time is going by so quickly, but just talk briefly about that. The, what the prison system went through, and is it any better today with all that they've gone through? Is it any better today than it was when you, you started on this story? Well, the system back then used what they called building tenders and building tenders were inmates who agreed to uh, cooperate with the prison system officials. And in exchange, they would get some, uh, you know, better privileges. And their job then was to keep peace within their cell block. And, of course, um, they were not uh, that careful about uh, uh, how you, you know, pre- people's rights and, and, and caring about people. They just wanted to get their job done, make people be quiet so that uh, their cell block um, did, did not have any problems with uh, the officers. So that was the system that was working for years and years in Texas prisons, and, and that, was, that was what made the system efficient in the eyes of the man who, who the penologist who uh, wrote the uh, uh, commendation saying that Texas is one of the better prison systems in the country. But then just a few years later, uh, Judge William Wayne Justice, federal judge, uh, said Texas was treating inmates unconstitutionally and uh, and so he took charge of the whole prison system, uh, which at that time would have been like, I don't know, maybe 70 or 80 uh, different prison units scattered all around the state. But he took charge of the running the prison system and said, we're going to do it this way. We're going to do things that way. Uh, and, uh, and so that was his uh, approach to it was we're going to change the system one way or another. And uh, there was major reaction. Well, the prison system itself, the, the heads of the prison systems said, well, no, we don't, we not, we don't have building tenders. No, we're not mistreating anybody, blah, blah, blah. And uh, denied the things that the judge was accusing them of. So they went through a trial that lasted a year. And when that trial was over, it was judged that the prison system was at fault. And uh, so then they had to learn, okay, how are we going to change? And the judge prescribed some, the changes that they needed to make. So they started working on those, but officers who had been there a while said, wait, it it worked better before uh, yes the system we had before was more efficient than what you're talking about now and they resisted all these things that the judge uh, was in, instituting uh, in the prison system um, and then there were some of course that went along they 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 did the right thing uh followed the uh the directions of the judge one of those was keith price who uh, became a warden at that time. He, at this time, he was a, uh, an officer, like uh, I think, a, what, a captain or so. Yes. And uh, he was uh, uh, put in charge of those, uh, the investigating uh, charges of use of force. So when an officer used force, he would investigate to see if there was a justification for that officer to use that force. And he became an enemy of many of the uh, prison 
uh, officers at that time, just because he was seemed to be on the other side from what uh, from what they were. Well, you do a so, remarkable that's job. A, that's of, another. That's another part of the story. Is in the book is uh, Warden Price's connections. Yes, and I love so, I love the way you portray him, and we learn so much about what actually goes on in the prison system. The book is Real Prison, Real Freedom. Rosser McDonald. I mentioned the book is this this transformation that Ricky goes through, and I want to touch on this before we run out of time. What is this transformation process that Ricky goes through that changed his life? And it started with what a a couple from a ministry that uh, that visits him. Talk about that and and why that was so impactful and and really changed Ricky's life. Well, in the book, we uh, give the story of like I don't know maybe ten attacks that he made on the officers and inmates and so on. And there were a lot more than that, but those were the ones that would be in the book. But then through that, Ricky was was just, he, he developed hatred. Ricky had a kind of a code of honor of his own. And that was, if he tells you something, then he's going to do it. I mean, he's he feels bound to do that. And uh, whether that's, he says, I'm going to do something good for you or whether I'm going to, you know, hurt you which either way but he 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 did uh, live up to what he said to them but he was he was just full of rage and hatred and um you know it was it, it took over basically his life uh in a way that i mean he was controlled by rage and hatred even more than he was controlled by being inside the walls and the wires and all those things of the prison system but eventually i mean those things he just wore 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 him down and uh and finally well he he really just was he had a, a plan that uh, they were going to get out to the cells he and a couple of other guys take over the cell kill a guard blah 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 so they tried three times they had three plans that they tried to to do that with but each one of them failed and ricky thought you know what is what's wrong here i mean it may, it may what is it is it's always my plans have always happened well before so what's happening now maybe it's god maybe god is trying to protect those people maybe god doesn't like me uh so he's you know he's thinking that way but uh, in the meantime he got out a letter that had been sent to him two years before uh by someone who said we're gonna i'm gonna pray for you blah, 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 and gave some uh, scripture. He used a scripture from Matthew where Jesus said, come unto me, you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Well, when Ricky got to that, to rest, he thought, rest, that's what I need is rest. And that started him on the process of looking into what Jesus means by I'll give you rest and how does he give you rest and so finally, Ricky got down on his face on the floor, concrete floor in his cell and said, Jesus, I'm, I'm yours. If you want me, I will come to you. I'm, wet, I'm willing for you to come in and take control of my life. And so he felt after that prayer, he felt relieved. He felt rested somewhat. And in fact, he went to sleep. Um, and uh, so so that convinced him, you know, there is something to this God stuff. And this is after when he was like 13, 14 years old, he went out in the woods and cursed God and said, if that's the kind of God you are, I don't want to have anything to do with you. You can go to hell. And uh, so now here he is uh, uh, accepting uh, Jesus into his life. And, uh, and, and, and recognizing that there is a God and that he needs to pay attention to God and live as he wants him to. So then he went from there to tell other, I mean, you get excited about that and you've got to go tell other people about it. Yes. It. And that's what he, that's what he did. And he has for 30 years, he's been telling other people about it. And in fact, he's one, he's brought many, many people, uh, to faith in Jesus Christ 
by telling them his story, and that includes inmates and officers. And uh, so he's he's basically a missionary in the prison system. Going to say he's got sort of moving to moving to a different <sighs> prison unit. He's got a whole new uh, group of uh, people that is his mission field. Yeah, I was going to say he sort of got his own ministry going within within the prison system, and thus the title of the book, "Real Prison, Real Freedom." Keep in mind, as as Rosser is talking about this transformation, this was someone who was labeled the most notorious inmate in the uh, the whole Texas penal system. The book is. Real Prison, Real Freedom, Rosser McDonald. His website is rossermcdonald.com, Rosser with two S's. Uh, you'll find the book at Amazon, all of the usual places. Link on at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Time is going by so quickly. A, a couple minutes left in the program. Why do you think uh, Ricky is so successful in, in spreading this message? He, you would almost think there would be people that don't want to hear this message, but he's one of them, and he seems to be very effective, as you said, in, in spreading the message. Yes, um, well, and he, he is able to tell them, I lived the way you're living, yes. or I lived the evil that is going on here, uh, but I changed, and this is how I changed. And so he's able to tell them his personal experience uh, with uh, being on the, on the bad side and coming through the transition to the good side. Now, you know, the, the thing, the bottom line of all of this is human nature. It's human nature that got Ricky into trouble so much and caused him to do so much damage in the prison system and to different people. Um, he was just following his human nature. And the transition that he made was to stop living by his human nature and learn how to live by God's nature. And uh, that doesn't happen just, you know, automatically. You have to learn. And he, fortunately, he had a, a volunteer chaplain and others that, uh, that helped him and, and guided him through that. Uh, one example was um, this volunteer chaplain told him, you know, you've got to forgive all those people that you hurt and all those people that have hurt you. And Ricky said, I can't do that. And uh, Jack said, you have to do that. I mean, God forgives you as you forgive others. And you get that in the, in the Lord's prayer. So, um, so Ricky said, okay, I'll try. And he began and he was very, every time he saw someone, he had the opportunity to talk to someone that he had been uh, crossways with. He he asked, he apologized and asked for forgiveness. And, uh, and many times, you know, they would accept it. Sometimes they just turn and walk away. Yes. But, uh, but this, but it's changing from following human nature to following God's nature. But our society is just rampant with human nature. I mean, that's what people live. It's, you know, it's all about me. No one matters but me. Yes. And uh, so you, what you do needs to be uh, something for me. And uh, that's kind of the way Ricky was during the uh, real prison part of the book. But then he became to recognize that, um, that there's, there's much greater value in uh, doing things the way God is, God teaches, and, um, and, and become one of his. And he will help, you know, his uh, talking to other inmates and all that. He, he, he senses that Jesus or the Holy Spirit is right there with him uh, to help him in that uh, in that witnessing. And that's the real freedom part of the title, Real Prison, Real Freedom. Our guest on the program, Rosser McDonald, R-O-S-S-E-R, his website, rossermcdonald.com. Book available wherever books are sold, amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, readersmagnet.com, all of the usual places. I, I want to just wrap up uh, the program briefly. You've seen so much in literally the decades that you've been doing the documentaries, focusing on Texas prison ministries. Are we making any progress? Are are we doing anything right in rehabilitating the people that are in there so they can reenter society successfully? Uh, not really. Well, there are some good programs that going on uh, in the last uh, few years in the Texas prison system, and that helps. But 
you know, they talk about prison reform, and there really is, that's just not something that you expect to happen because prisons, all prisons operate, each state has its own prison system, and they all operate separately, plus there's the federal system. And they'll make rules and uh, policies and all they have, but they have limited effect because in a prison unit, the warden is the one in charge and the major, the warden is uh, in the uh, executive part of it. The major is down with the uh, inmates and, and the officers. And uh, so they're the ones that, uh, that, 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 you know, control the attitude that, uh, that is happening within that prison system. And, uh, you know, that's more, they have more effect than, than what the policies of the system are. And, and then there's reaction from the officers to what an inmate says from his cell. And there's reactions from an inmate when he hears an officer complaining uh, about yes. him or whatever. So there's, you know, they, they, they go back and forth with each other. And there again, that's, it's human nature. Well, we're it's, back to that human nature part of that again, and how prevalent that is and the negative impact that has. This book is is so well done. Our guest is Rosser McDonald. The book is Real Prison, Real Freedom, uh, an excellent book receiving rave reviews. It's a must read on so many levels. The book available at Amazon, the usual places, rossermcdonald.com is Rosser's website. What an amazing career that you, you've you had, continued to have in, in writing this book and in getting the word out there. Rosser, it's been our pleasure and honor to have you on the program. Thank you so much for joining yeah. us and jo- joining us today. Excellent job with this book. I, this is the first book. Are you working on anything else? Um, well, I'm working on a biography now, whether I'll ever get finished with it or not, we'll, we'll see, but, uh, I've enjoyed being on your program, Rick. I appreciate, uh, your having me and, uh, being able to tell the story. And of course the real story of the book, and there's all this evil that you go through, but the real story is that he turned around away from that evil and learned the new way of living the way that God wants him to live. Real freedom. The title is so well, uh, it, it sort of succinctly tells the story, real prison and real freedom. And uh, keep working on the biography. Let me know how it's going, because I'd love to have you back to talk about this amazing career in journalism that you've had. Rosser McDonald, our guest on the program. Book Real Prison, Real Freedom. His website is rossermcdonald.com. Link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bechet, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.